And Eddie, we're just one week away from the return of Anthony Joshua. But you know, why don't we try Michael Hunter back out here and Hergovic and have like a little tournament tonight after those performances? Well, you know, everything that happened with Jarrell Miller, who knows what might happen to Andy Ruiz next week? Those guys got to stand by. I mean, you saw two heavyweights that are really in the world title mix. Michael Hunter and Philip Hergovic. Hunter is all heart. Small, he's a nightmare, and Philip Hergovic is a beast. He's gonna be a real problem to everyone in the division. I'm not sure they're gonna be queuing up to fight him, but you know, we're seven days away from the big debut. Anthony Joshua, Unified Heavyweight World Championship at Madison Square Garden against Andy Ruiz. And Ruiz is on this. He's trying to make history, the first Mexican to become World Heavyweight Champion. We can't wait. Is Ruiz going to be the fastest fighter that AJ's face as far as his hand speed? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a bad style for AJ because you look at the smaller guys that he's fought, Takam, Povetkin, he struggled a little bit against that style. Ruiz is a lot quicker than both of those guys. Um, he probably doesn't punch as hard as Povetkin, but he's got pop. And what I like about Andy Ruiz is, I don't think he even knows the opportunity that he's in front of him right now. Like, he's just going to go and have fun. He's going to let his hands go. He said he's going to try, like I said uh, in his interview, Mike Tyson style, get on the inside, work Joshua's body, let the big hooks go over the top. This is going to be a firefight. Joshua's got to be on this. Everybody's talking about Deontay Wilder, the undisputed fight. When's it happening? Worry about Andy Ruiz. He's a problem next Saturday. If you take your eye off the ball in this heavyweight game, like that, it's over. And we can forget about those fights. So the pressure's on Joshua. We saw a great performance from Wilder last week, two weeks ago. Now, Joshua's got to return the fire. He's got to put in a dominating performance against Ruiz, and he's got to knock him out. How much pressure is there on AJ to perform here in the United States? Obviously, the, the hardcore boxing fans know him well, but some of the casuals aren't too familiar with AJ. This is their first time to get a good look at him in prime time on zone. And that's why we're here. You know, we're here to show the American fans and everybody in America how big a star Anthony Joshua is. You will not believe the show next Saturday. We've got a great undercard. And when this man walks to the ring, there will be fever in New York. We've sold tickets to over 50 countries attending MSG next week. We've got about 8,000 Brits coming. Even the New Yorkers are getting involved. We've got the Mexicans now with Andy Ruiz. It doesn't get any bigger than this. It's the mecca of boxing, Madison Square Garden. It's the unified heavyweight championship of the world. And although AJ and his media will say it's just about getting a win, I know deep down he wants to show all the American people that he is the number one heavyweight on the planet. Co-main event Callum Smith coming over. A lot of people think that perhaps he could be the next opponent for Canelo Alvarez or at least somewhere down the line. What do you want to see out of him at Madison Square Garden? Well, I mean, we saw him win the World Boxing Super Series. He's a standout 168 pounder in the world right now. He's a Ring Magazine champion. He's taking on Hassan and Dam, former middleweight world champion, stepping up. We've seen and Dam fight Lemieux, beat Murata. He's a very capable contender. And also Katie Taylor. You know, for me, the standout female on the planet, going for the undisputed championship against WBC world champion Delphine Pissoon, but as far as Callum Smith is concerned, he wants the Canelo fight. You know, I think Canelo's going to hopefully fight Triple G in September. We've got a little Demetrius Andre, you shouldn't forget about either. He's the key to undisputed. But for Callum Smith, he's there. He's the Golden Goose at 168, and it's the first defense. And what a place to do it again at Madison Square Garden, live on the zone. You mentioned Kaylee Ta Katie Taylor, two women who have fought her squared off tonight. Amazing, yeah. We think it might be the female fight of the year. What was it like for you sitting ringside? Amazing, and you get that from McCaskill. Sometimes she's a little bit crude, but the way she beats you, she breaks you. And she's just, you know, I had her winning like the last four or five rounds. After four rounds, I thought she was down. You know, I thought it was a very close fight. I thought the, the scoring was quite poor, to be honest with you, but I did have her winning the fight. She's just got to carry on unifying. You know, there's two girls there that Katie Taylor has already beaten and have moved up and won world titles. Katie Taylor is a phenom. You know, she's a, a queen in Ireland. And the garden will be a light next week to watch her try to become undisputed. She's fighting Delphine Pissoon. I think she's 46 and 1. She's, I think, pound for pound above Katie Taylor in the rank. It's going to be an absolute war. Next week's going to be really special. Tune in on the zone because, you're, like I said, you're going to see the best heavyweight in the world. You're going to see the best super middleweight in the world in Callum Smith. You're going to see the best female fighter in the world in Katie Taylor. And uh, you may see one of the future all-time great fighters in about 10 minutes in Devin Haney. Yeah, Devin Haney. This, this fight night was supposed to be based around Alexander Usyk, yeah. who suffered an injury. How did Devin Haney convince you not to cancel the card and to elevate him into the prime time position in his DAZN debut? Well, some things, things just, sometimes things just happen. You know, fate happens. And of course, we're here for Alexander Usyk's heavyweight debut. It's always a nightmare, you know, when that happens. 
but we were there, Devin Haney, I see him as a superstar. He's got a tough fight against Alexander Mor uh, Antonio Moran tonight. But he's 20, he's a baby, but he's getting a chance on the big stage tonight. There's a lot of pressure. Everybody's talking him up. He's talking the talk. Can he walk the walk? Let's find out. Yeah, you've been in this game a long time. Your dad, obviously, before you've seen some great prospects. He's saying that he could possibly be the next big, big thing, like on a Floyd Mayweather yeah. scale. Do you believe that hype? I do, but I don't want to say too much before this fight. <laughs> Talk to me after, but it's, it's so difficult at 20. You know, we've got so many great young kids turning pro with us. You know, Ammo Williams, Raymond Ford, Oprah Jones, Espino, Pacheco. But they're also 19 or 20. He's had 21 fights. He wants to fight Tiafimo Lopez, Lomachenko, Campbell now. And if he wins tonight, he'll get a final eliminator for the WBC. And he'll fight the winner of Lomachenko, Campbell. It's really before his time. But he also won't be at 135 too long. He's a big kid who's growing. So I think he wants to win a world title, a lightweight, move through the gears at 140. This guy's got aspirations to be a multi-weight world champion. Let's just get through tonight yeah. first. Like you said, he can talk the talk. We'll see if he walks the walk. You always do it. Thank you. Eddie Hearn, ladies and gentlemen.